Right. Uh, it's been a hot minute, hasn't it? Um, I want to get back into these image speakers again. So we'll just go for have a little brief update and I'll show you what I'm up to next. So I'm going to bring you in here. Uh, so I think the last time I had a look at these, they were two way. Uh, so these, this is the, the image brand from, uh, from Auckland in New Zealand. And I really like them. And then, so have a look at the other video and you'll see what they used to look like and, and what drivers were in. So we now have, um, uh, Morel Tweeter, Morel, uh, Mid, and then most recently the base drivers as well. Uh, so that was the 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 two way as I was listening to it for quite a while and I was really enjoying it but I just needed a little extra boom so I was trying to work out how I was going to do that and um, these drivers they're absolutely lovely but they I've firstly I, I think I've said before and I'll say it again it took a long time for these to actually come right they were really stiff and um, quite mechanical sounding for a while and it took a while for them to to really bed in and sound their best. Um, but uh, I'm really pleased with, with how they've turned out. Uh, and then these drivers here, I say drivers, cause there's actually two of them. There's one down there as well. So I'll show you that. Uh, so I've got one open here at the moment. So uh, what have we got? We've got uh, eight ohm tweeter, four ohm mid. Um, and then this is, these are eight ohm as well, but I've actually, hooked them up parallel so I get eight ohms I get four ohms out of them and you can see the other one firing downwards there so I did that uh, for for a couple of reasons I didn't really want to load up the whole front with the drivers and I figured it would be an interesting you know just looking acoustically in this room to have two bass drivers pointing in different directions to see if I could cover more frequencies um, so I did that and then tried to work out uh, how to do these filters. And I'm just going to quickly uh, show you inside. So uh, what is it? A, a second order uh, high filter. Uh, so first cap, second cap, and then uh, the inductor across. So just a regular um, uh, uh, wire air coil there at some point I'll replace that with something a bit fancier uh, and then the mid-range and you can see a couple of burly resistors down there as well so I had to really tame that and there's a really nice foil uh, wound uh, inductor there much like these here which I'm about to put in for the base drivers uh, and quite a hefty uh this one so these caps these are mundorf uh this i can't remember and wherever that there it is it's uh, i think it's about 75 microfarads that uh cap that's uh completing the circuit for the mid filter and then yet yeah, taming it down uh so each of those resistors are uh about uh four ohm resistors give or take give or take we've got a, we've got about i think a, a couple or a little bit more than a couple of ohms resistance just um taming the mid uh that's not the mid there it is and then uh way down there is a very ugly um uh yeah steel core inductor that used to be something like eight millihenries or something. Um, I'll turn you around and talk to you. Uh, that I butchered until I got the right value out of it. And getting the right values was quite interesting. So I spoke to uh, Image about this, to the, to the manufacturers of the speakers and just sort of asked them for a bit of a heads up. And they gave me some really good advice, which I mostly ignored. Uh, and so I've done this my own way. Uh, so this is much like, uh, I think Dynaudio do this. I don't, I don't know why I've done it, but I've, I've done it like this. The, uh, high pass filter is really high. It's at 48, uh, uh 48 kilohertz. Yep. 4,800 Hertz. 
Um, and then the mid drops off after about uh, 600 hertz, I think. And actually, uh, what happened in the end with the... Uh, no, I think I went... I was trying to get it down to about 300 hertz. And it just wasn't sounding right. So I've, uh, so that came up. I think it was about six... I think the mid goes down to about 600 hertz. And then the bass drivers. Um, and they seemed really... They just... It, they weren't... It wasn't cohesive. Um, so I pulled up the... Uh, frequency of the uh, bass drivers so they're actually technically crossing over at about 800 hertz but it just sounds right they they're all working together um, and uh, yeah lots of extra boom it sounds great you've got some really nice um, uh, nice bass lots of really punchy bass but again these drivers they've taken and so these are um, what are they uh, MW16, ooh, come on, focus. MW168. Um, and uh, they're a lot cheaper. So I think they, the these ones here, the Supre, uh, Supreme ones, they were, uh, what was their, S SCM634. Um, they're pretty spendy drivers. I think they were near enough 1,500 Kiwi dollars for the pair. Uh, whereas these other ones were getting on, I think they were less than $700 for a pair. So uh, made it an awful lot cheaper for me to do that. Um, and uh, they, on paper, they go a little bit lower as well in frequency, which is quite kind of handy. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. Um, the journey has been fun. It's all, you know, everything's sounding about right it's taking a long time for part particularly the speakers to bed in but also the components as well every time you change something it's like doing open heart surgery it takes a day or two for um for things to settle down there's some pretty murky connections in there that i need to so for the most part there's some really you know just really simple point to point uh connections um but here where i added the resistors it's pretty uh, messy in there so we'll fix that I've also got these really cool uh, binding posts now I can't remember so these came from uh, a shop in I don't know why this is not focusing um, an online shop in the UK called the Hi-Fi Collective uh, I can't remember what brand they are I know that they were pretty pretty reasonable quality um, they're rhodium plated, which is not really my thing. These, you know, what I would prefer right now would be um, a lightweight uh, silver plated copper, uh, you know, high quality copper with a silver plate on it. Uh, this is rhodium plated. They're really, there's a lot of material there. There's a huge amount of material, but I'd like to give those a go uh, over the standard, pretty uh, sort of generic looking. Uh, I think they're pretty much brass, really. Oh, can I get that to focus? There we go, that's better, isn't it? Um, so, I think it might be worth swapping those over. Uh, but yeah, I think ultimately I'd prefer something, what is it, uh, KLE. They do a binding post that's mostly plastic, uh, and then just has really light amounts of high-grade copper with a silver plate on them. I think that's more my cup of tea. But I'll make these work since I've got them. I've got eight of them. So, um, uh, and like I said, they weren't they weren't cheap. They weren't horrifically expensive. But uh, we'll see how that goes. I think that might at least make a, a vague improvement. Um, and yeah, I'm sort of you know this is all starting to split hairs a little bit. Uh, for what it is, but I, I've, from experience, it all makes a little bit of difference. Um, with that iron core uh, inductor, which I really did butcher. So uh, at, right now, it's you know it's going to be relatively high resistance. It's going to be the the um, inductance is going to be all over the place once you put a good amount of power through. So to swap them out with these lovely. Uh, 
Mandorf foil foil uh, wound coils, uh, and you can see they've got a really again trying to focus that. There we go. Uh, low, very low resistance. Um, so we're going to put those in there and see how that how that helps, and hopefully just it'll just extend uh, those low notes a little bit more um, and give it a, a, a dose of reality, a little bit of realism and sort of slightly less mechanical sound at that, at that low end. Um, not to say that they're not good listening to right now. I'm actually pretty pleased with them. Um, I, I'm probably doing a million things the wrong way and certainly the filters are, uh, well, I wouldn't say unorthodox, um, but they're, they're definitely not what they should be on paper. Um, but they sound right, or, or at least right to my ears. And then listening to other speakers, other unfettered, man, manufactured speakers, and coming back and listening to my own system, I sort of, listen to it and go, yep, do you know what? You're on the right track. So quite a lot of fun happening here. Um, uh, and um, yeah, I'll just keep, I'll, I'll post another one and let you know how I get on. Okay, bye.